Hi, I'm Shalia. And I'm Jeff. And welcome to Twin Flames Universe Talk Show, Episode 5, Zia Chooses Her Twin Flame. Join us in this thought-provoking, emotional, and spiritually stimulating episode with Zia as we help her work through some common blocks and barriers to her twin flame union. As a bonus, you'll learn how to identify twin flame information and teachers who resonate with you at your core. We invite you now to join us in connecting with Zia. Hello. Hi, Hi Zia. Zia. Hey, guys. Hey, welcome to our show, Twin Flames Universe Talk Show. We're so happy to have you here. Hi, thanks for having me today. Yeah, thanks. So how's your day going today? Yeah, it's good. It's nice and rainy and cleansing. It's a good day. How about you? Nice. It's been a really good day so yeah, far today it's been good. here, too. It was, it was actually pretty sunny and... We went for a walk out on a little island near our house. And... Very spiritually productive. Uh, yeah. I hear that. That's yeah. wonderful. Cleansing. I can relate. Cleansing. Yeah, how's your journey going? My journey. My journey's awesome. I am happy to be here on Earth. Um, <laughs> Us and too. It's... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's an ongoing process. Um, I feel very grounded in my own personal intentions and goals and um, I've, I've felt very productive the last few weeks, so that's been good. really wonderful. That's yeah. a good way to start off uh, 2016, you know, a new year. And I know you've been delving right. into um, Twin Flames Dreams Coming True eCourse. Sure have. Absolutely. Awesome. awesome. How's I mean, that going? I have. I've actually gotten through it, but... Wow. Whoa, good um, for you. But I have to say that I'm not done because my heart has very clearly shown me that um, you know, you can go through something once, mm. but you usually have to do it a couple of times to pick up other things. So, totally. um, there's still definitely some homework for me to be doing. Um, <laughs> but there are certain techniques and just reminders that I receive from the course that have been very helpful in my day to day activities and, Good. um, allowing me to turn back into myself especially when things just kind of get rocky and rough I'm like oh yeah I could use this tool here and um yeah it's a really good reminder you guys put it together so well and it's just mm -hmm. really um it's a very potent course so I would love to mm -hmm. highlight that potent cool. course thank you I'm sure our <laughs> viewers at home are um, gonna appreciate Curious. your, your yeah. feedback on it as well mm -hmm. thank you so let's talk about your twin flame journey Zia How, how's that been going What's the dish? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you know, it's funny. I was thinking about this earlier. Um, I've, you know, I've pretty much just known, I've just known that there's a, um, a counterpart, a divine, a divine someone or another out there in this world. And I've known it from a very young age. And this is what I was thinking about earlier. When I was really young, I want to say like four or five, I, mm. I took this little piggy bank box and it had like a lock on it and a little handle and a little slot to put like coins or, you know, whatever in there. And I wound up taking that box and writing on little pieces of paper, mind you, I'm like four or five, mm -hmm. of all the things that I want in a <laughs> and I, I put those all in there. Nice. And it was so, it was like so serious for me when I was wow. so little. And so I've always kind of had that like that fairy tale mm. mindset in a sense. And yeah. it, it's kind of funny because I was thinking about it and I was like, what did I even write on these pieces of paper <laughs> at like five years yeah. old? Right? Wow. And I That's pretty mature. Thing. I want to point out for yeah, a five-year-old, you know, like I, I wouldn't have thought of that, but I was definitely um geared towards having a well for me i thought it was a soulmate back then i you know like most of us hear about soulmate before twin flame but it was really a twin flame i was really geared for that too at a very young age i just called it a wife uh -huh. but you know same well, same, well with the same very specific idea that feeling my, and energy yeah. my perfect lover my ultimate lover yeah yeah, yeah, it very much is a feeling because there are definitely a lot of terms. Um, like I personally resonate with divine partner. Just for myself, I feel like that's very encompassing for me. When I was like five, I don't know, I don't know what I was thinking or feeling necessarily. I feel like 
it was kind of similar to what I feel now, but all I can really remember writing, and this is kind of a negative thing. It was kind of funny thinking about it though, is I don't want him to play baseball. What do you really mean by that as a child? <laughs> I don't want him to be a shock. <laughs> No, you know, it's really interesting. I, you know, we all have our, our parental stuff, et cetera. And my dad was like this, this major like baseball enthusiast when I was younger. And I, I feel like I was just kind of asking for something that was um, maybe in a sense, just kind of more pure than my father. And it just kind of turned out to, to be put into those words. But it's funny because I've dated a lot of dudes who have played baseball. And um, I've kind of looked at that as like, huh, What's that's that? kind of like spirit telling me that that may not be, you know, that may not be the person because that's something that you agreed upon with spirit at a really young age yeah. by putting that little box. But so, I want to go deeper yeah. into that idea, Zia, and this is really important um, because you're bringing it up, that idea is still in your consciousness and your vibration. Mm. And that's a particular idea that's leading you to your twin flame or what you call your divine partner. So let's let's get really clear on what you meant. So you said that you want something purer or clearer than your father, and you also said with you know a little bit of disdain that he was really into baseball. What about <laughs> him being really into baseball did you not like? Yeah, you know, I think it was. Um, uh, I'll just I'll just share this openly. I think it's something that needs to be spoken about, uh, maybe a little bit more out in the world. Is just um, having sexual trauma from family members yeah. and um, why baseball, huh? I would say that at that age, I think that's when I was starting to experience those kinds of things, um, just mm -hmm. just around in my environment, um, if not even a younger age. You know, mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to sit just for a moment and kind of see what sure. comes up around the word baseball. Um, it's yeah. beautiful that you're willing to pause and yeah, sit with thank that you. feeling and allow whatever mm -hmm. to arise to arise. And we'll sit here patiently with you for as long as you need to. Thank you. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah, you know, um, when I think about it, I wouldn't say I'm, right now I'm, I'm in the place to like just drop down into meditation just because I yeah, sure, that's fine. Today. That's okay. But yeah. Something that comes up pretty quickly, though, like when I pause and I close my eyes and I see like baseball, I yeah. just see this like um, some anger. I see um, uh, what's the word? I just like the trigger ugly. Yeah, there, there's totally a trigger there. There's triggers. There's feelings of just kind of like this darkness, this darkness, this anger is present around baseball around playing baseball so, so um, but thank you for pulling that out because yeah. it's something to definitely ooh. so one of the beautiful things about um working with me is that i'm a divine channel and i can see directly into your mind and your heart and um right. what's coming up for me is to ask you this question did your dad mm -hmm. pay more attention and interest in baseball than you Oh, absolutely. But, you know, it wasn't just baseball. <laughs> yeah. there, there were definitely other things at play. But, you know what, maybe at that moment when I wrote it, maybe it was baseball season. <laughs> so you're, you're probably right. And, and what I think is going on, Zia, is that what you wrote in, and put in that piggy bank is that he pays attention to me and loves me more than baseball or more than anything else. And, nice. that, he, and that he delights in me. Mm -hmm. You know, because I think that's what every little girl desires to experience from her father is, Dad, do you delight in me? You yeah. know, because it's this love and affection and attention specifically from our father that we're desiring to have because we um, girls receive something different from their mothers than sons do. Um, mm -hmm. And with, you know, that statement, Daddy's girl is, I think, very true for every single woman is we're looking for this love that only our fathers can give us. And it's through this loving attention. It's through their presence and it's through their enjoyment and delightment in our energy, the feminine energy specifically. Yeah. So I think a lot of people can relate to your story. Zia, and I certainly personally relate um, to 
childhood sexual abuse and to also having an absentee father Me too. who, um, yeah, well, he was in the family up until I was about nine or 10. And then, you know, my parents divorced and, you know, saw even less of him, but he was never really around because he wasn't very present. But my triggers were different. You know, my dad was not a sports guy. He's a workaholic, you know, it's his business. So I always had triggers around mm -hmm. business and <laughs> it really was hard for me when I, um, started out in the work world, you know, because I related that to my dad and I related to making money and being bus doing business was like a bad thing. And you end up being like an emotionally despondent, immature person. Mm -hmm. But, you know, luckily I've looked at that and I've, I've healed it. And especially with, uh, since uniting with my twin, um, was able to go more into deeper healing and resolve a lot of that conflict inside. So they thank you for sharing that. Cause I know a lot of us can relate to that. And I know that talking about it is a process that we call consciousness raising, which is a very healing factor in that when you heal, I heal. And when I heal, you heal. And I think it's a beautiful thing when we can come together and, and share these things that are close to our heart. Yeah, I definitely agree. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, thank you for touching in on that moment, because that's kind of um, where my memory draws back to like the beginning for myself within your question. Mm hmm. And, you know, I wanted to mention, too, how um, I've been noticing talking to other twin flames that a lot of us from a very young age, because this is what we were originally talking about, at a very young age, we had this desire for the ultimate lover, basically our, mm. our, um, our perfect partner, our perfect divine partner. And I find that's very interesting how there's a seeded desire from an extremely young age to be partnered with the, the perfect person. You know, I, I definitely was like that. I was very geared. And so I think it's really cool that you wrote this down. And mm -hmm. here you are now, you know, in the process of manifesting. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I want to take this yeah. moment, Zia, because um, we're here and we've brought it up and we can help you with uh, some basic tools so that you can heal this um, this experience, this trauma with your father and your, the piggy bank. If you desire it. If you'd like to. Yeah. It, it won't be difficult. Yeah. It'll be very easy and very gentle, and it'll heal it. Sure. You know, I personally uh, just work so much healing in my life, and <laughs> I, I find that when I listen to other people's experiences or someone else processing something, um, it it allows me to learn new tools as well. So I'm happy to go awesome. through that process with you guys. Yeah. yeah so Shalia um, likes to bring this one up a lot since she wasn't breastfed as a child. And I know we spoke about this in a previous episode. Um, mm -hmm. Shalia experienced trauma from not being breastfed. So yeah. what she can do, and this is pretty much the same thing that the mirror exercise guides you to do. And um, I'm not sure if we touch much on it in Twin Flames Dreams coming through the e-course, but we go very much in depth to it in it in uh, twin flames finding your ultimate lover our book but um the mirror exercise is something that helps you both identify an upset that you're not really aware of and heal it but since we've already identified it with you zia we can just go to the healing part and so going back to the breastfeeding idea shalia wasn't breastfed but she can give herself that experience mm -hmm. right now in this moment and experience the healing by imagining herself being breastfed as a child by Divine Mother. Yeah, in the form of my mom, because that's obviously who mm -hmm. was so Divine Mother. She may not have respect. the most positive um, opinion about her you know, birth mother, but she can put Divine it, Mother, God, yeah, in, in the form Yeah, in my psyche, of and this is true for everyone, in our deep psyche, who our parents look like and in essence are is who we relate to as Divine Mother and Divine Father. Mm-hmm. Mm. And, yeah. you know, at our parents' core is a divine being, just like everyone walking around mm -hmm. on this planet is a divine being. And some people may choose to dim that light so low, but it can never be diminished because that is the light of God. And only mm -hmm. God has that power. Even then, Absolutely. it's still God. So mm -hmm. <laughs> God's not going <laughs> to snuff God out. So let me take you through a quick little exercise and um, just okay. a very brief gentle, light, easy meditation. So you want to take a moment to just like pause and, and, 
and get at peace within your heart. And imagine um, that piggy bank. And imagine that, you know, instead of writing in, um, not like, you know, not, not, does not do baseball. My, my divine partner doesn't like baseball. Instead, write, my divine partner loves and pays attention to me. You can imagine yourself writing that in whatever, you know, a beautiful cursive pen writing on the piece of paper. My divine partner loves and pays attention to me. And you can fold that up and put that in the piggy bank. And you can imagine your divine partner on the other side of that piggy bank smiling at you <laughs> with his arms wide open. Hmm. And you can smile at him and let him wrap you up in a hug. And allow him to give you that attention and that you've always desired. And listen to anything that, any messages that he may have for you right now. What is he saying to you? And you can reply back or you can just smile and continue holding him in your arms, hugging him. And you can stay here for as long as you like. Mm -hmm. And let us know when you're done. We'll sit here with you for as long as you need to sit here. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. I, I love that, you guys. You know, I would say from your course... Um, because I, I feel that very much, and I sense this presence. It's very much the feeling of who this person is um, <laughs> or what the energy is that this person encompasses. <laughs> and through your course and a couple other um, tools that came into my life, I actually feel a lot more telepathic with this mm -hmm. energy. Cool. And it's, um, and it's, it's real. It's like freakishly yeah. clear at times <laughs> and, and honestly at times it's not freakishly clear and it's just kind mm -hmm. of like okay well I still can sense this presence and mm -hmm. um there was a it, it might have been in your book because I did read through your guys's book which was mm -hmm. also really a really fun read actually I really <laughs> yeah. loved it <laughs> nice thing and one of the yeah one of the meditations is to um go into a space and I think I've created it up a little bit more in my um, head than maybe what it exactly said, but what I gathered was go into a space and um, invite your twin flame in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when you invite that person in, like it's going to come. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's simply <laughs> going to come. And it, it's interesting because since I did that, although I still see and sense this energy present there, um, I feel very, very independent and very, um, like personalizing my life right now, mm -hmm. very much encompassed in my own energy. And I actually, in this very moment, um, don't so much feel that, that freakish presence of like, oh my gosh, you're here and talking to mm -hmm. me and wherever you are at in this galaxy, like mm -hmm. you, you don't necessarily feel right there right now. So I think that's an interesting part of this journey, this like on off switch that I've been sensing with this experience. So there's mm. two things that you're talking about, and I'm kind of feeling into the feelings of what you're talking about. And I like to separate these two ideas to help you get clear on what you're what you're feeling and what you're thinking. So let's first talk about because you mentioned wherever you are in this galaxy when you were talking about your twin flame or your divine partner. And um, while 97% of everyone on the planet's twin flame is incarnated here on the planet with them right now at this time, let's talk about that other 3%. Because you, like a lot of people, um, have somewhere in the back of their mind, maybe I'm that extremely rare 3% where my twin flame is not incarnated here today. Um, and I'd like to share a story that um, of a spiritual experience that I had that God showed me to help me answer this question. So I went, it, it was when I was living in Hawaii, and I went to pick up a friend from her wolfing farm. And Hawaii is a very diverse island. There's the big island, right? It's a very diverse, you know, um, ecologically island. And as I drove, the um, the vibration began to change. My The reality around me began to change, and God told me I was driving to pick her up from another planet. But God was creating it so seamlessly that there I, there was no way I could tell whether I was on the big island or on some alien planet. And he showed me through my heart 
that I was absolutely on an alien planet. The the trees looked different. The gravity was different. The animals. The animals. The chickens were actually were like totally different. You know, I knew that they were chickens from the Earth plane. Mm-hmm. But if I'm looking at them through my heart, they were a totally different creature. The goats were different creatures. The people had totally different um, experiences and challenges they were going through. Everything looked like and felt like I was on a totally different planet. And it was a planet of great beauty. And I picked up my friend and I brought her home and I crossed over the portal. And, you know, I'm back on Earth again. And it was completely Mm -hmm. seamless. And I wouldn't know the difference of whether it was actually a real experience like it was in my heart and like it was I was as I was communicating with God all the way along or you know if it was just whatever it's mm-hmm. totally seamless and God said um now imagine this and he told me just food for thought here Shalia came from a different dimension on a different planet and Sedona when you went to visit it was a, on a different planet <laughs> and then you brought her back to Hawaii which is on your planet <laughs> And notice that your her father was the only person that you met for, you know, a day from her planet. Otherwise, that was it. Yeah. So the reason he relayed this to me, and I can't really be sure of whether she came from a different dimension or planet or not, because the experience is so seamless, is to detail that it doesn't matter whether your twin flame is anywhere in the universe or across the multiverse or anywhere, because yeah. God will make it easy so that you can unite. And I just want to say, like, um, previous to meeting Jeff, you know, I had some, I talked to some psychics and a psychic friend, that, and they all confirmed, I even went to the Akashic Records, I had an Akashic Record reader, it was my friend, anyway, and they all said I didn't have a twin flame on the planet, and I just felt like, what the hell, what, why, what's going mm-hmm. on, I, this is not what my heart feels and desires, and even when I would personally vibe out across the planet i i couldn't feel i couldn't feel them i couldn't feel my twin i couldn't feel any vibratory match mm-hmm. so i yeah. thought i was gonna be a spinster all alone for the rest of my life you know but um i that's why i really believe what jeff is saying is that um we as we expand our awareness as we expand our conscious awareness we become aware of how God works, how energy works, how our source works, because that's where we come from. We come from source. And as we become more self-aware, we understand how we are able to be united in our twin flame union beyond um, logical comprehension, 3D logical comprehension. So, you know, it was really interesting when Jeff and I met because um, I was like, well, uh, I was told we were not going to meet, but apparently that wasn't true. And I, uh, I've always known, well, from a couple experiences with some, some psychics, you know, I lived in Sedona and all that. So I had interesting experiences there is that the future is fluid. It is never solid. You know, mm-hmm. you can't, it doesn't actually exist. It doesn't actually exist. Never sure. This moment. There can be some predictions based on the choices that you're currently making. Sure. But it can uh, it can change, you know, because we change and our choices change. Absolutely, and I fully, I completely resonate with that. It's very interesting. I um, I definitely have experienced uh, this part of my journey from about I don't know, maybe eighteen years old to now. I'm I'm currently uh, twenty six. Mm-hmm. Earth years, whatever you want to call it. And I, <laughs> sure. I very much um, have a walk-in experience. I had a walk-in experience at 18 and, and my life forever changed. And so um, when I mentioned the whole galaxy part, it's very interesting because I feel like whomever this counterpart is, is very much um, a walk-in as well. And mm-hmm. so by all means, I completely believe that, you know, this this creature could be anywhere in the universe and could be mm-hmm. walking in at any time right. onto this earthly realm. And actually, Shalia, you and I had a, a brief conversation about um, twin flames and how uh, different psychics, different people who read twin flame energy, like there's just different, there's different material, there's different information because different twin flames have different missions and purposes. So there's a lot of information out there, but I was directly told like, yeah, he's not incarnated right now. And it was interesting because Hmm. 
that's where my whole um that's where my whole memory of my my walk-in flashed before my eyes it's like you're a walk-in mm-hmm. and like you're you're still kind of hovering like to be honest it's not every day that I'm completely grounded on earth. Like I am still very much hovering in a sense. And so I can sense too that, Oh, if I am a parallel mirror to this other counterpart, then okay. He is probably hovering too. So that's, um, Mm -hmm. that, that, that was some information that I picked up, um, kind of recently just from having conversations with, um, other channels who do this kind of work. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Cool. He has a fair assessment to make that if of where you're at vibrationally is likely where he's at vibrationally. Yeah, that's right on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So let, let me talk about the other part of what you had brought up earlier. So one yeah. was you, you were there was a thought that you were having that maybe, you know, he's from a, in a different galaxy or somewhere else or um, whatever. And through our, our conversation and through the story, um, I shared that my understanding is and the truth is, he will arrive and be with you as soon as you're ready. It doesn't matter where you are. Nothing can separate you. Mm-hmm. So the other point was you're having, you're feeling a lot of independence. And as you're deepening your understanding and awareness of Twin Flames and of your Twin Flame, you're learning that you become more yourself and that means greater strength in yourself. Mm. You're not dependent on anyone. You're not dependent on your twin flame. You're simply expanded. And in that expanded state, you feel more grounded in yourself. And there's more energy for you to work with because your counterpart is here. Mm-hmm. Because he who complements you, completes you, is here assisting you on your journey as you're just connecting to his energy, not even talking about his physical self with all his skills and wonderful creative love and expressions. Just connecting to his energy expands you because now you're understanding who you are in reality at the core of who you are. And that sense of completion brings more expansion to you and allows you to express yourself more clearly in alignment with who you truly are. Mm -hmm. So it's beautiful that you're learning and experiencing more independence as you connect more to your twin flame. It doesn't mean that, oh, I got what I needed from connecting with this energy and now he can Mm -hmm. poo-poo off the the wherever and I'm good here. Mm -hmm. It means that you're getting closer to him. You're not going to be dependent upon him. You're interdependent. Mm -hmm. You're two wings to a bird, a beautiful bird. Mm, thank you. I see it as a beautiful bird as well. Mm. And you know, this, um, this shift in consciousness, um, that I've, I've just experienced by expanding my awareness even further, um, into this realm of divine partnership. It's, um, I have felt my own personal focus go on mission, which is so big. Like, it's just, that's, that's why you come together. You come together for mission. Mm-hmm. And um, mm-hmm. I, I feel like I have uh, negated myself and downed myself about like, I don't know what my mission is. Mm-hmm. I don't know what my purpose is. And this shift has happened where I now look at myself and I'm like, oh, Zia, you're already on your mission. Yes. Like you yeah. are already doing the work. And yeah. and even just the um, the the work that I do in day-to-day life for monetary compensation, that is very much my mission too. I feel Mm -hmm. very, I feel like I am um, just more at ease with Mm -hmm. that rather than racking my brain. Cause I feel like it's, um, that's a big part of this, um, this collective, this collective group of twins, divine partnership, um, new earth. It's, it's figuring what you are here to do. And I've just noticed like, Oh wait, I was making way too big of a deal of that. Um, I'm I'm already doing it because people, yeah, like a clerk at the grocery store could very much be on their mission and they're a clerk at the grocery store. (laughs) It doesn't doesn't matter what it looks like on the outside. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. matter what you're doing on the outside. It's about what you're doing on the inside. It's not about yeah. how it manifests. That's yeah. God's job. It's about yep. what it feels like and what you're choosing on your emotional and feeling journey. I know that there are some people on this planet where their sole purpose is just to smile. <laughs> and you know the and what happens? They're looking at you. They're smiling. They're uplifting the state of consciousness on the planet. 
They're bringing it into a higher vibration, higher frequency. Some people, their purpose on the planet is to be a mother or a father and to nurture children, and that's their purpose. It, for some people, it could be sitting and meditating or chanting, or it could be creating art, or it could be going into the tech field. It, or it could be a zillion things It manifests in so many different ways. But the truth yeah. is, is that as long as there is no place in your life where you are betraying yourself, you are on purpose. Even if it's going for a walk, even if it's working a temporary job that, you know, doesn't uh, feel totally satisfying. If you feel in your heart that you are not betraying yourself, then you are on purpose. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people I... judge the outside, you know, like how we judge a book by a cover. But what we don't understand is what is actually happening inside is really big and huge and transformative. Mm -hmm. So... Like agree yeah because we when we're creating when we're manifesting we can only see within um a certain area of our radar screen and it's usually like one percent we can only see one percent yeah. with our physical eyes with this that's our physical reality but what's actually happening 99 percent of our reality is outside of the radar screen so that's why it's important not to judge our reality, but to continue focusing on feeling good and moving forward in a positive direction and making choices that are in alignment with our divine self so that we are not betraying ourselves so that we can go to bed at night feeling awesome and wonderful. I mean, like, hell yeah. I, you mm -hmm. know, I love my life. I yeah. love my life. I love my and life. And that's, <laughs> that's the energy that's going to attract and magnetize your divine partner. Because you are not in that state of separation. It's your divine partner is a state of consciousness. And that consciousness is one of love. It's one of unity. Mm. It's one of being your true divine self, who you really are, and loving who you really are. A lot of us didn't grow up with parents who taught us how to love ourselves. We've had to teach it to ourselves. Mm -hmm. And those who are learning it or have learned it have the responsibility to share what they know with others who are open to learning and who are open to changing. That's the only way you are ever going to experience your desire is having a high willingness to learn and a high willingness to change. Absolutely. And that's something that is um, just in this law of manifestation. That's very interesting. It's a very interesting process. And I, I feel like the the change, um, the, the willingness to change could be highlighted just a little bit more because it's such a um, it's from my experience, it can be a very drastic process. Yes. And sometimes, um, especially like if you take a course, Mm -hmm. Um, like, like your guys' course, for for instance, it's so life changing, and it shows you truth mm -hmm. that you can't continue living a lie when you know the truth. Yes. And so once that change implements into your life, everything around you changes, and that can be very, um, you know, it, it can trigger very old things, very yeah. scary things, and it's something that, um, I. Um, I'll just call it out into onto this earth and ask for more support for everybody yeah. on this earth who, <laughs> oh, man. Who, who's really desiring this manifestation for their life, for love, for wealth, for creativity, whatever they're asking mm. for. Just, yeah, um, more easeful change for everybody and more support. You know, uh, you're bringing up a really beautiful thing and something that's been reoccurring through a lot of these episodes of Twin Flames Universe Talk Show is this scary upheaval that happens when you make the new choice. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to talk about what that is because I want to bring more light to that. I know a lot of Please. people, especially on their Twin Flame journey, will experience this really scary drama or this runner-chaser dynamic or this separation phase or all of this upset that arises when they meet their twin flame or when they're doing twin flame work or spiritual work or like you said any sort of um, work which increases your vibration because this yucky stuff these emotions these feelings these thoughts they come to the surface to be cleared and you don't have to do anything 
except let them go. Mm -hmm. You don't have to attach yourself. You can do whatever feels good to you. If you like, you know, hopping in the hot tub or you like getting a massage or you like doing Reiki or you like hanging out with your crystals or you like meditating or you like taking a good old long nap. Petting your cat. Whatever you like to do to help you <laughs> move through that experience, sure, that'll help. And there's a quote I just want to jump in and share from Buddha where Buddha says, I'm kind of paraphrasing here, but if there's a thorn in your side, pull it out. Don't look at it. Don't analyze it. Don't ask where did it come from, what happened. Just pull out the thorn and move on. Because mm -hmm. we can get tripped up in our story about, you know, this thorn and then, you know, it can kind of inhibit our healing. It's just don't just pull it out and move on. So the beauty is that you've already done all the work once you made the choice. So like mm -hmm. in Twin Flames Dreams Coming True, we're directing your awareness to all these very specific places and we're doing it in a, a multitude of ways into a multitude of places so that you can't possibly make all the choices and then not end up with your Twin Flame. What I mean is yeah. it's, it's, it's impossible to fail at the course if you're making the choices and doing the work. You will be with your Twin Flame because we've directed your awareness to so many places which any single one of them making a new choice would bring you your Twin Flame. But it sounds like, and I can see into your mind, Zia, that you've made all of the choices that we've directed you to do. And in doing so, yeah, there's going to be a lot of upheaval. But it's a beautiful <laughs> thing because all the work is already done. Yeah. You yeah. don't need to do the hard work. You already did it. Making the choice and um, experiencing the new awareness is the hard, the hard work. And I just want to say, in the process of healing, after the upheaval stage, there's an integration stage. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's where a lot of us just need to rest a lot and just mm -hmm. be very gentle on ourselves and easy on ourselves. And then we experience the um, the uh, new healed state, that balance. During this state. integration period, it's great to eat good food or <laughs> drink nice wine. Listen or to gentle music. Hang mm -hmm. out and take care of yourself. Yeah. Nurture yourself and That's give really to yourself. That's really what it is, yeah. yeah. I know we've been going through an integration period, and um, we we slept more than we were awake oh, for gosh. several <laughs> days in a row. <laughs> and when we were sleep. awake, we did very little beyond lay in bed and hang out and watch movies and, you know, do yeah. the basic stuff. Yeah, just the basic stuff. But it's that it's it's that that we chose to give to ourselves that helped move move us through these periods much more quickly. And it moves us forward quickly. You know, as opposed to not honoring ourselves and what we need to give to ourselves. Like if I was to like, well, I need to go and, you know, work on this new project and la 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 la. Well, because I'm supposed it's... to or some thought in my mind says yeah. I better keep working and I, I, I shouldn't stop. You know, that's not right. The quality and quantity yeah. of my work is way higher when I honor those deep integration periods and I take rest and I take time for myself because if we look to nature, nature tells us everything that we need to know to be in balance. And trees, trees. Do, trees do not grow all year round. In wintertime, they rest. They're not growing. And it's the same with us. When we're sleeping, we're not growing. <laughs> and that's okay. You don't want to grow all the time. That's <laughs> part of growth is rest. Part of growth is rest. It's a cycle. And so what what I'm really pointing to, Zia, and what I'm really pointing to um, everyone at home is as you're upheaving, as you're experiencing this drama, this trauma, all this yucky stuff that everyone knows, you know what that is, you know what that feels like, it's important to remember to focus on the good feelings that you're experiencing or at least to not focus on the yucky stuff that's coming up. Because it's just, it's just, it's just mud. It's just yuck that your that your soul is clearing, that your soul is letting go of, that your mind yeah. is upheaving. If if you and I want to give you a very gross example, and if you're a little squeamish, you know, skip ahead 45 seconds. But if, if you imagine that you're puking, <laughs> bleh, there goes all the junk, right? You don't sit there and look at the puke. You just flush the toilet. Yeah, I puked. I had to puke. Didn't feel so good. Flush the toilet. Clean waters in the bowl. <laughs> That's totally. it. It's not, oh, oh, the puke. Some people like to roll in it. And here it is in my hands. Well, <laughs> well, don't do that. It. Well, I gave you the option to skip ahead 45 okay, seconds Okay, well, they get, I, I understand. You, you freak out and wonder if I'm going to die or not. Or... Right, exactly. Yeah. But just flush the toilet. And, and if you got to puke again, puke again. And give yourself the time. 
this is not like, you know, I have food illness. Sometimes you have to well, puke what, for days. Well, what Jeff is really, um, what he's really pointing out is don't traumatize yourself in mm-hmm. the healing process by looking at, um, you know, what is it that you're uh, upheaving. upheaving. Because that's like, that's, I'm telling you, it's a bottomless pit. And I've gone there. I've mm-hmm. been like, oh, you know, no, focus. Me. No, just focus only on um, my upheave and the never-ending journey that is upheaving. Well, mm-hmm. what I focus my attention on is becomes my reality. And you know, I, I was talking to God probably a couple months ago about this, and I and I said, God, what what is the truth of this? You know, I I must be having a false image somewhere about myself because it feels terrible to always think of myself as someone who's a, a constant work in project, work in process, or mm. whatever work in process. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for healing. And God's like, "Yo, focus on your wholeness, because that's who you really are. Yeah. You're not this Beautiful. person that's always upheaving and that's always because that because <laughs> that means like I'm fragmented, and that's not true. Not really I am not are. a fragmented being. I am a whole being. Focus on the truth. I am a whole being. You are a whole being, and um. I because of my conversation with God about um, this image of myself as being uh, fragmented because I'm not whole yet because I'm always having to heal and heal this and heal that uh, was not true. And as I focused on my wholeness and as I healed that thought in my mind, because that's where the seed of power comes from, our creative faculties come from our mind, which is connected to the mind of God, um, I no longer... Um, I don't know, I have a lot more of a peaceful and a more calm uh, reality. And I don't see myself as as fragmented. I just, I see myself as someone who is whole and, oh, looks like I'm clearing something. Cool. Focus on my wholeness, not on what I'm clearing and upheaving. That's the real core of it. If you Mm -hmm. can choose to focus on your divine self, your fully healed whole state, the place you are when you feel really good, and even though you feel really bad in this moment as you're upheaving, it's okay to feel those feelings and let them go, and just remember who you are at your core, because that focus is what's going to get you through the fastest. You Mm -hmm. can't speed up the process very much, you can't, you can slow it down a whole lot, but it's just going to happen naturally in its own way, and there's nothing you can do to, uh, to speed it up other than just let it go. Because it's happening yeah. already at its fastest rate, its most easy natural space. So this is where I want to tie it in: is how does how does this what we're talking about? How does that tie into twin flames? How does that tie into our own twin flame? Well, we could tie it right back into it um, because we were talking about the upheaval that ex- that you know Zio was experiencing from doing all this work. Mm-hmm. with Twin Flames dreams coming true e-course. And the truth is is that when we heal this in ourselves, we also heal it in our Twin Flame. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. the beauty of Twin Flames is all the work that you put into yourself, you also put it into your union and your Twin Flame. And you experience miracles in your union instead mm-hmm. of um, looking at your partner and being like, you need to change. I don't like this about you. You need to change that. Well, I prefer to heal it in myself and experience... Mm-hmm miracles in my union because you know you're empowered with the mirror exercise with twin flames finding your ultimate lover book Mm -hmm. you know that you have full creative control in your union over your experience because you can do the mirror exercise and heal the thing that's annoying you about your twin flame and this is the biggest secret to the purpose of our twin flame is this process of mirroring because they are us they are who they are who we are at our core and when they're mirroring something in us that we are upset about it's only when we're upset about something you mm-hmm. know that they're mirroring something and you know and that's uh, i just can't stress this enough how important the mirror exercise is because i see so many people who who are unequipped in their unions and they experience um upset after upset and even the pain of separation and Jeff and I said this in a previous episode how the it's more painful to not be in your union Mm -hmm. you know a lot of people like oh it's so hard or you don't want to be in it and I hear all this negative talk about um the excuses to not be in your union but it's harder to not be in your union because you are not with the person that you were designed to be with eternally Mm -hmm. you're trying to stop that 
You're trying to stop that flow. People don't want to get into their unions because they say, they see, oh, I got to go through all this upheaval and upset, (laughs) right? Oh, it's so hard. But like Shelly is saying, it's so much harder to pour your love into a partner who's not your twin flame. Yeah. Because, yeah, you knew from the age of four as a little girl that you had some perfect divine compliment out there who you're supposed to be with. There's a man out there designed for you by God specifically to compliment you, your specific counterpart, another part of your soul who you can feel whole and complete with in a totally new, expanded way. Mm-hmm. So what's harder, feeling really wonderful in your total and complete place and having to go through a little upheaval or not? Because eventually the truth is, is that you're going to you're going to reunite at some point down the line. That work, it, you can't run away from yourself. Mm-hmm. You can't run away from the obstacles that um, have been placed by yourself um, to your twin flame. The Just because at. we're on a planet that's developing spiritually quickly to the point where twin flames are normal doesn't mean that you're not going to get there. Yeah. One, mm-hmm. Another way to say this is just because you're on Earth, a place where twin flames are rare, doesn't mean that you're always going to be in that place. Because Earth, as a collective consciousness, is rapidly bringing people into their unions. The consciousness here has been pumped full of Disney films for <laughs> 80 years, where the characters on display, the Disney princes and princesses, they're embodying twin flame love all the greatest love stories are modeled after twin flame love and that's Mm -hmm. in our consciousness and it's programmed into our hearts and as we're seeing wow there's no real boundaries here we're all connected well guess what's going to happen as we're expanding our consciousnesses and we're expanding our collective consciousness one thing that's happening and it's a major piece in the ascension of the planet is Twin flames are coming together. And if you're feeling the call, there's no running from it. You can hide from it and numb yourself out, but eventually you're going to have to face who you are. Yeah. Part of the ascension path is uniting with our twin flame Mm -hmm. because we are returning to our original state of oneness. In our original Mm -hmm. state of oneness, we are united with our twin flame. That's That's just the truth. That's how you were created. You weren't created solo. Mm -hmm. You weren't created separate. No (laughs) child of God was created alone. Every Mm -hmm. one was created with a twin flame. Yeah, because we desire to experience the love of God um, purely through another being, Mm -hmm. which is us. And twin flames were the only way God could create that or were the best way that God created. The best way, Mm -hmm. yeah. God always does the best. Amen. <laughs> We're gonna have a Noah's Ark with a twin flame for the ah! <laughs> <laughs> That's a really cool visual. The world isn't burning. No, or flooding. <laughs> no. It's true, it's true. <laughs> this is us all getting off the ark onto the new promised world. Aha, there it is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> with the symbol yeah. of peace. And that's mm-hmm. why we are getting together and doing this show and you know creating a lot of twin flame content because we believe in seeding this new consciousness on the planet together in harmonious union with our twin flames so you're touching on another beautiful point in zia and um as it as it arises in this conversation this is something that we've also um spoken about in a previous episode i think with alexander was you've got you've got to build something. If you're going to build something fantastic, if you're going to create heaven on earth, you have to have the appropriate foundation. Like in the Bible, it says, build your ha- your house on, on, on rock, not on sand. Because when the first storm comes, well, if you built it in the sand, it's going to fall in the ocean. But if you built it on rock, it's stable. So the first, the first layer is, you know, of your foundation is your relationship with God. And the next layer is your relationship with yourself. And really, your relationship with God and your relationship with yourself are the ex- exact same thing. Mm-hmm. Then it's your relationship with your twin flame. It's your twin flame union. Yeah. From there, you can build your heaven on earth because you're at your home. You're at your core. And the next thing which arises naturally is your twin flame purpose. What are you doing together? What's Where's the energy flowing what do you want to create? What co-create do you, what do you together, co-create? Yeah. What is your raison d'être? <laughs> what is your reason for being? Yeah. 
-hmm. So having your twin flame union is essential. It's a prerequisite to creating your fullest and truest heaven on earth and wherever else you go in, in the multiverse. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. I, uh, yeah, I, I would love to just um, express something that's coming up that I thought was um, a very beautiful process within my journey um, that I feel a lot of people could relate to. And, um, and, and you, Jeff and Shalia could probably relate to as well is picking up soulmates along the way who help you and teach you in just these ways that you kind of never saw coming. Maybe mm -hmm. you look back at it and say, oh, wish that didn't happen, but it did. But it really mm -hmm. had all this purpose to it. And it's really phenomenal. Um, I feel like I connected into this um, uh, consciousness of twin flame energy a, a few years ago. Um, mm -hmm. it, it came to me. I worked with a woman. I was a, oh, an assistant, I guess you could say. Uh, to a woman who goes by the, the twin flame um, matchmaker. And I, I mostly just worked with her in the realm of business, but the whole twin flame aspect was very present. And so I was like, oh, yeah, like, that's me. I know that's me. And it will come one day. And um, I started to find um, my process accelerating, my healing process mm -hmm. accelerating, et cetera. And I wound up going down to a very spiritual place in the United States, Mount Shasta, and, um, and picking up a soulmate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and it was really a phenomenal thing to happen, although um, I kind of feel like I stepped into a process to, that was maybe a little bit uh, longer, a little bit drawn mm -hmm. out rather than expedited. Although I feel mm -hmm. I was able to tap into some very deep core things to clear out mm -hmm. and something that was very evident to me that, Oh no, this is not, I mean, I, I knew from the beginning, it wasn't a twin flame. I knew from the beginning we weren't mm -hmm. going to, you know, be together forever, that type of deal, but it was very, something very important was there. And it was like the moment that that importance closed, our relationship took a closure. It was like, oh, my gosh, my magic is coming back to me. Mm -hmm. Everything that I feel like I have almost put on hold in a sense is mm -hmm. coming back to me. And I just I feel like that is so important to stay in that space of clarity and openness and even magic to mm -hmm. attract this kind of energy into your life. And um, I guess, you know, to have reflection from you, Jeff and Shalia about this process, because it's really interesting when we're vibing um, at a very, I don't want to say like higher or lower, just a different frequency than a lot of people. And we just start to like magnetize soulmates from mm -hmm. all over the place. And it's like, how, um, you know, besides the internal compass, the internal yes, no, um, what's really like the best way to, to mm, delve into um, the soulmate energy and really like respectfully for yourself, because there's a lot to learn there. And I do find it to be really important because I still have this gentleman around me in my life since we we're on a business contract to a certain mm -hmm. date. And um, I've, oh my gosh, I've been doing the mirror exercise so much <laughs> around him. And it's really funny because I'm looking at it and I'm like, huh, this is really, really challenging. So I guess another question besides, sure. besides what is the internal compass and what other tools can you use with delving in with soulmates? But also, um, let me see how to make this clear. Um, oh, my gosh. I, I was so like ready and like excited to ask this question and just flew away from me. Maybe one thing at a time. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we can go to, we can go to the first thing about the internal compass with soulmates. So let's, let's get clear on what your ultimate desire is. Because huh? if you're, if you're wanting to hit the stars, but you think the moon's a little closer, you're going to end up on the moon, uh -huh. not in the stars. And let me translate that specifically. If you want your twin flame, but you're settling for a soulmate, you're not going to get your twin flame. Mm -hmm. It's not your job. It's not your responsibility to do the work of God. It's God's job to bring you your twin flame. And it's God's job 
to set the steps and the path. So if you desire your twin flame, point yourself there and let God bring the people. Mm -hmm. Let yeah. God bring the relationships and the lessons. That's not your job. Your job is not, well, logically, soulmates are a great way to, you know, develop my understanding and, you know, bring me closer to my twin flame. Mm -mm. As soon as you step there, you're saying, I choose soulmates. You're mm -hmm. saying, I don't choose my twin flame. If you choose soulmates, let it be because you desire a soulmate and you desire to make grand concessions in your romantic life. Let, let yourself choose soulmates because you're not ready for your ultimate lover, because you choose no. a lesser romantic partner. But if you choose your twin flame, choose your twin flame and let God do the work to bring you forward. Let God bring the partners. Let God bring the experiences. So if that's what you're choosing, say, I choose my twin flame above all else, and I release all beings, all experiences, all thoughts which are out of alignment with that desire and with that choice. Mm. And you asked about your internal compass. You know by the way you feel if mm. you're headed toward your choice. If your choices are clear, it's very clear which direction you must head. Even if you can't yeah. see beyond the step, this step looks silly, God. God says, take it. God, I don't know how this is going to lead to that. God says, take it. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. ultimately, God is directing you in the best way toward your desire through the choices you have made. Now, if you're holding some other thought or some other choice, like I choose soulmates, guess what? You're not going to get your twin flame until you get rid of the choice that says I choose soulmates. Absolutely. I, just... I agree. Yeah, so I, yeah just, I just wanted to share something quick to kind of ground what Jeff is saying with a personal story that three years ago, I made the definitive choice to be only with my twin flame. And I thought that meant I couldn't be with anybody else. But, uh, you know, I remember when I was talking to my spirit guides actually about this, um, they were like, well, you have a choice. Do you want to take the fast track to your twin flame or do you want to take the slower track to your twin flame? And I was like, well, give me the fast track. <laughs> what kind of question is that? Yeah. And so anyway, um, <laughs> I agreed to the fast track and I agreed to be with my twin flame. And within a month, I met a man who I had like no doubt was my twin flame. Of course, I'm talking about a false twin flame. But that's where my feelings led me. My feelings and my internal compass led me to this man because he was the perfect specimen that um, embodied a lot of challenges and um, blocks that I was having to my true twin flame. And I... I mean, this sounds crazy. We, we only dated for six weeks, but within two weeks we were living together because I was so utterly convinced and I followed my guidance. My guidance said, move in with this man. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, are you kidding? I have like a really cush place right now, but okay. Mm -hmm. And my guidance through and my partner at the time said, you know, quit your job. And I'm like, that's crazy because my job, you know, is actually pretty secure. But no, I did it. You know, I did all these things. It was like total chaos. And then like within a couple of days of him moving in, I was like, oh, shit, this this is not working out. I made a huge error. But there was no error. I was being led in the perfect direction all along in order to this was the fast track. So it was a lot of upheave, a lot of scary change, but I was dedicated yeah. to being with my twin flame. So I agreed to this on a soul level. <laughs> I, I remember the conversation <laughs> and, um, okay. of course I was fine. I, I found a new job. It was okay. And I found a new, I, we obviously broke up then six weeks. I found a new place to live and it was, it was much, it was fine. It was good. And, um, you know, I learned a lot. And from that experience, that's where I focused on creating the love list. I know you heard about this in, in the course, Dreams Coming True. And, I mean, I had so much contrast that I experienced. I was very clear about who my twin flame was and who my twin flame wasn't. So I was able to hold that list to a standard. And I opened up. This was the one of the... Um, I had a false image about who my twin flame was. And mm -hmm. that's one reason why I attracted my false twin flame because he looked like 
basically the hippie guy that I always wanted. And then I realized, you know, I can't, I will never find my twin flame if I use my eyes. I must use my spiritual sight. I must use my heart. My heart, my heart will know. And we've Beautiful. said this before many times. Um, both Shalia and I dismissed each other because we didn't look like the perfect partner yeah. that we had idealized. But right. we started talking and connecting. Oh, it was very there clear. There was no yeah. deceiving my heart. Yeah. <laughs> you can deceive my eyes, but you cannot deceive my heart. Because mm. I know yeah. what I like. I know what I desire. I know who's right for me. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And so when I made that choice and I went through my false twin experience, within three months, I was united with Jeff. You know, and I had a couple dates um, before that. And, you know, as I opened up my repertoire and I looked at, um, I was open to men that I normally would be closed off, but I focused on their heart. I focused on, are they kind? Are they generous? Are they loving? Mm -hmm. Are they present? Are they nurturing? These, these were the high quality men that I desired to be coupled with because I was no longer going to uh, get burned essentially and fall for the old traps that I used to fall for. Because you were yeah. looking at the outside. I was looking the at the inside. outside, you know, and I didn't have, have a, nice um, a father have a role money? model Does to, like, show nice me body? the way. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> you know. Beautiful. Yeah. So, um, do you have any... This We're coming to the end of our... our um, segment. You know, segment here. Do you have any last-minute last questions or that maybe that last question um, kind of came to be as we answered this one? Yeah, you know what it did, and I feel like through your um, what you were just explaining, actually, I feel like uh, my question has been answered. But I'll just mention what the question was, sure. and that is, um, you know, I personally, I'll just state this out there into you know all that is that mm -hmm. I choose my twin flame. Amen. And, <laughs> and <laughs> yay, round of applause. <laughs> and. Um, with that said, you know, even before the soulmate came into my life, quite like um, Shalia's story, I still chose my twin flame. And even all through this experience, I, I feel like there were definitely many places within my head that I, I needed to change my language to clarify and direct myself more clearly. Um, but with that experience, um, I, like I was saying, I do, I have had to do the mirror exercise when coming into contact with this very, very lovely individual. I will not speak down on him whatsoever, but definitely soulmate. And so with that reflection of, oh my gosh, soulmate, there's a lot of work to do here. Um, something that comes up frequently within the twin flame, um, consciousness and community is, oh my gosh, it's going to be so challenging to come together. And a lot of people talk about separation and um, just almost like volatile um, yeah. connection. And, uh, you know, it, yeah, it's totally. And it's very interesting because I find that I experience um, something maybe similar with like, um, soulmate energy like oh my gosh I get to really see what I need to work on right now sure. and I'm going to come into myself to really do it and I know that on a mass scale on a collective scale of humanity and um, just being a cosmic being as I am working on this I know I'm helping this soulmate out definitely True. but I think the answer that I gathered is um, so when I am working on this volatile energy um, I'm not only working on myself, but very closely, directly also working with my twin flame. Um, I just, so that I just want to mention, yeah. I don't mean to jump in here. And when you said working on this volatile energy, do you mean like the separation everyone was saying and you know how hard it is? Is that what you meant? Yeah, totally. Absolutely. Yeah. And I just want to say, don't, don't even um, acknowledge that in your consciousness. Don't even acknowledge that because then you make it real in your reality because mm -hmm. you're believing it. You're buying into it. If you listen to um, yeah. our first episode of this season, you'll hear from Joyce, whose twin flame reunion story is very simple and easy and gentle. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, there's some Beautiful. upheaval. Sure. Yeah. But um, yeah, there's, there's not a lot of trouble in it. It's just natural and gentle and easy without any of this extra stuff going on yeah 
that's something I really appreciate about you two coming together and sharing your message because you share um, a different side. Um, it's very evident that you two have um, cognitively and consciously chosen to do the work together. And so what you present feels very seamless. It feels like, oh, if you really want this, like you can just jump in and do it. And it's exactly. Cool. exactly. And um, I believe in that personally for myself. I feel mm. like, um, you know, I've been doing a lot of, you know, the internal work, et cetera. And when I come together with someone who I'm going to be working with, like mm -hmm. MS, I'm, I'm calling in peace. I'm calling in yeah. ease. <laughs> and, um, so, yeah, I appreciate that from you, too. Awesome. And, um, yeah, I think that my question before about just, you know, how are soulmate tests different than the um, the twin flame test and I, I just feel clear on that answer so, good yeah so I just want to say you know one last thing to really wrap this up and uh, wrap up the kind of the uh, the last segment of our conversation with Yuzia and it's who are you listening to do they have what you desire because if they're talking about twin flames and they're focusing on the drama and the gross stuff and they're saying oh it's so hard oh it's so painful there's so mm -hmm. much crap that you got to figure out it's barely worth it but you get this cool title mm -hmm. well guess what that's what you are going to get when you follow their advice you're going to get Absolutely. what they have i also notice Absolutely. um you know if if they're if a person is presenting themselves um in union and they have pictures of themselves that are basically looking like they're trying to convince you the audience that they're with their twin flame you know i say that's a red flag Mm -hmm. You know, and pay attention to how your stomach feels. Pay attention to how your solar plexus feels when, when you're, you're listening to their information to or them. connecting to their energy, because your solar plexus and your heart are going to indicate very clearly what you're going to feel like mm -hmm. when you follow the information. If it's true, mm -hmm. you yeah. know if it's true or not. Or if it's going to cause. Don't listen to what they're saying before you feel what they're saying. Mm -hmm. All yeah. everyone's logic feels pretty right on, and what everyone's saying feels pretty strong and real. Or uh, it seems that way, but once you feel into it, well, maybe it doesn't feel so good. Yeah. Maybe that doesn't feel like something I want to follow into. And when you follow our work, you can do uh, a little exercise. Feel the information. What does it feel like? Does it feel really good? Or does it feel like maybe I should run the other way because it's <laughs> lies? Mm -hmm. look yeah. at us what are we trying to do what is our motivation at our core yeah what do we what is our motivation here yeah, yeah i'll let you answer that question audience in your own heart <laughs> what, what do you think that shalia yeah. and i get from all this yeah magic <laughs> <laughs> That is my honest answer. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> well, um, thank you so much for joining us, Sia. I feel like we could talk for hours and hours yep. on end. Um, but for yeah. this episode, we like to keep it for, you know, an, an hour, hour long. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much, Sia. And we will talk with you soon. And for uh, everyone at home. It's been a pleasure. I'm oh, sorry. For everyone at home. Um, if you'd like more awesomeness about Twin Flames, you'd like to delve into more of our work and our information, visit us at TwinFlamesUniverse.com. All right. Thank you so much, Zia. Thank you, guys. Have a good night. <laughs> you, you too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.